It is the winter solstice, so we wanted to do an update since today it has the shortest amount of solar hours for the year. And we have now been on solar power for a year and a month. Yep, 100%. 100% off solar power. So we're going to do a quick video kind of recapping uh, some of our thoughts for being on solar power mm -hmm. for over a year now. And um, show you some clips back when we put the system together and built it and everything, which we did. 100% on our own with uh, pretty much no experience. It was just a shot in the dark that we're working not you know, blow ourselves up or anything. So, <laughs> That's terrible. But, we're still here. Yeah, we're still here. <laughs> still Worked here. out pretty good. Yeah. Um, so a long time ago, we did a six uh, six week update. It was I think our last one, and uh, of course, lots changed since then. So. Yeah, and lots of life has happened. Yeah. So yeah. we'll go ahead and uh, get going on this, and hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> In our system, we have 24 2 volt low river AGM batteries with a total of 1,050 amp hours. These batteries are charged from 48 REC in peak panels rated at 320 watts each, which are broken up into three arrays consisting of 16 panels, broken down even further into two sets of eight panels wired in parallel. They are controlled by three Schneider. Context MPPT 8100 charge controllers, one controller per array. The power then flows to the Snyder Power Distribution Panel, or PDP. This is where it joins with the batteries in the two Schneider Context WX Pro 6848 inverters. In total, there is 15.36 kilowatts of solar, of which almost 13.7 kilowatts is available to power the house at any given time. That's a lot of power. In fact, we found that we don't need all that power and oversize the system, which I'll get to later. The house has 3,400 finished square feet with another 2,300 square feet of unfinished garage space and storage. This gives us a total of approximately 5,700 square feet. When we started the build, we planned to keep the house around 2,000 finished square feet. But when COVID hit in early 2000, we decided to make the barn that we were building into the house. This opened up a lot of usable space, resulting in a massive increase in finished square footage. So basically we're blaming the size of our house on COVID. We bought the entire system as a package deal during a 10% sale in the fall of 2019 from Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. I'll put a link in the description to their website. I can't say enough about this company as they give lifelong tech support, which I've used many, many times. The system totaled $37,498.87 on sale, which included tax and shipping. When we purchased the system, there was a 30% tax credit, which we were able to take full advantage of, bringing the cost of our system down to $26,249.20. I later had to purchase a racking setup, which was $2,362.21, which included tax. I drove to pick the system up myself so there wasn't any shipping charges. That year we received a 26% tax credit, which brought the racking system down to $1,748.03. Add those together and you get a grand total of $27,997.24. I'll round that up to $28,500 to cover any miscellaneous stuff I need to purchase along the way, such as tools, nuts, bolts, pieces of wood, things like that. I also installed the system myself, which was a huge savings. I don't have any experience in installing solar. I learned a lot along the way with the help of other YouTubers. Uh, for example, I called Josh with the Wild Wonderful Off Grid, who was kind enough to answer some questions for me back when I was installing the charge controllers. So of course, one of the biggest questions we get is are we saving any money by being off grid? For us, the answer is simply yes. We are on 160 acres and wanted to build as close to the middle of the land as possible. The closest power line we could use was around 4,000 feet away, and the power company guessed it would run around $40,000 to $60,000 to run the line from their pole to our house. On top of that, we would have to create a path clear of any trees or brush 30 feet wide along the line. So our total cost would have easily been over $60,000 and we weren't willing to cut down so many trees. So right away, you can see that by simply going solar, we saved over $30,000. That savings aside, 
how long would it take to pay back the $28,500 we actually spent on the system? Before we went off grid, I looked at three years of power bills from our last house. That house actually had the same amount of finished square footage, but wasn't built or insulated near as well. At the time, we were paying around $2,100 a year on average over that three year period, and the rates were increasing around 5% per year. This gave us roughly a 10 year payback. However, the batteries are only set to last five to eight years, and there's always the possibility that something in the system will quit working. We may have to pay back as likely closer to 13 to 15 years. We could have gotten more years out of a better battery such as lithium, but in the spirit of being green, we wanted something that we could recycle. Lead acid batteries are 100% recyclable, where at the time lithium was not. The thought was that when these batteries needed replaced, battery technology would have advanced greatly and we should be able to upgrade to something with better storage life that would also be recyclable. Although I calculated that our payback is roughly 13 to 15 years, I actually think it will be longer than that. Reason being is that I looked at our usage over the last year and found that we actually used five megawatt hours less than we did when we lived in our last house. I can only guess that is because the house takes a lot less to heat and cool and I feel we are a lot more conscious about the amount of power we use. This is why I feel we oversized our system. See, I was looking at the usage of a 20 plus year old home with little conservation being done when I should have been looking forward to what we hope to build and calculate the potential usage there. This difference is only really compared to if we were looking at rates and usages from the previous house. Regardless though, we are very happy with the system we have and it's still a lot cheaper than if we had the power company run the lines all the way to our house. Another caveat of being off grid is having to use a generator from time to time, especially over the winter months. Over the past year, we've had to run the generator three, maybe four times. The power we produce from the generator is only about 0.33% of our total energy production for the year. In all instances, when we ran the generator, it was due to having multiple cloudy days in a row which typically happens during the winter months. We can handle a full day of clouds without a problem, even with the pellet stove and boiler running. Now, not all cloudy days are created equal. Even with full clouds, we still produce some power, and oftentimes that is enough to stretch our days of overcast out two to even three days. This is why we rarely have to use a generator, even in winter, since the sun most likely comes out at least once every three days. Looking at the pros and cons, I have to say the biggest pro of being off grid is that while other people in the communities around us have lost power several times, uh, we have not. Uh, we don't have to worry about a monthly bill. Uh, we had our large bill up front and, and we haven't had anything since then. Uh, once set up, it takes very little to maintain the system. For the most part, it runs and maintains itself. Uh, we just have to keep an eye out if something uh, were to break along the way. There are uh, warnings and alarms you can set up to where if the system's not operating properly, it will let you know. Uh, we're not worried about running the heater AC excessively. Uh, we're not the kind of people to do that anyways, but if we wanted to run the AC all summer long, we could do that without a problem. Um, if we want to run the heat all winter long, we could do that without a problem as well. So we don't have any worries about having excessive heating and cooling bills. One of the biggest cons I could think of is that eventually we're going to run into a problem and it's going to be on us to fix it. We really don't know what that entails right now or how much it'll cost, but that's gonna creep up on us sooner or later. Uh, we do have to think about our usage from time to time, especially in the winter days, uh, when the clouds are out a lot longer and the days are a lot shorter, your uh, solar hours are a lot less. So sometimes we have to think about um, if it's gonna be cloudy tomorrow, what we can do today uh, to conserve a little more. Um, also, there wasn't much help available on doing a multi-inverter system. It was easy to find out how to set up a single inverter system, uh, as they appear to be very common and easy to set up. In summary, we have been on 100% solar power for over a year now, and honestly, there really isn't a big difference in how we live now versus how we lived before. We still use a multitude of devices, such as computers, phone chargers, TVs, lighting, and the like, without having any worry. We have multiple appliances in the house as well. In fact, we have more than we did in our last home. 
We're of course still working on the home, so there are often compressors, saws, and other tools running alongside everything else in the house, and the system hasn't skipped a beat. Yes, there are some lifestyle changes and things to get used to, but we wouldn't have it any other way. We know this was the right thing to do and the right choice for our family, and we're very proud to be part of the off-grid movement. Thank you.